In this video, I'm going to continue the electronics, complete putting on the next two drivers and two motors. In review, in the last video, we connected the USB controller to the driver, we connected the motor to the driver, and we connected the power supply to the driver. Okay, let's go ahead and connect the driver to the terminals on the USB controller. We'll be using, like last time, the CP, CW, and ground. And we'll connect the Y-axis terminals. We'll start with CP, which is CP+. And then we'll connect it to the CP+, on the driver. Now we'll connect the CW from the USB controller to the CW plus on the driver. Now we'll connect the ground to the CW minus and CP minus. And like last time, I'll use a little jumper. First take it to C CP minus, and we'll jump it to CW minus. I'll connect it to the ground terminal on the USB controller. One word about wire management, you'll notice that there's lots of wires all over the place. One thing you want to be careful is not to have the motor wires anywhere close to the wires of, digi of the digital signal. If this happens, if the wires get close, then these wires are going to influ influence these wires. The inf interference from these wires will interfere with the digital, si digital signals and cause the digital signals to go outside of their threshold. So uh, you want to make sure whenever you're wiring, wiring these together, you want to have these power wires on one side and the digital wires on the other side. Next, we're going to power the driver from the power supply using the V plus and the ground or com. You can double these up if you want to. I'm going to be using the free ones. Take V plus to VCC on the driver. Now we'll take the common, which is ground, to the ground of the driver. Okay, now we're ready to connect the motor to the driver. Next we're going to take the motor and connect it to the driver. Red blue goes to A plus for bipolar parallel. Yellow black goes to A minus. White brown goes to B plus. And the remaining green orange goes to B minus. We have to remember to set our dip switches. We're using 1 8 so that's zero, zero, 001. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, that's a zero, zero, 001. And on the amps, we're going to use 2.7, which is 110 one, from 5110. One, now I'm going to test both of the motors using the jog. Remember to plug in the power supply. Okay, that's the X going in one direction. And then the Y, or the X going in the other direction. Now the Y. And you'll notice that you hear a different tone, the Y going in the opposite direction. Because in the last video, we actually set this, the X-axis, to half micro-stepping, not one-eighth micro-stepping. And I'm going to disconnect the power supply, and we'll change this driver to, to be one-eighth rather than one-half. So one-eighth is zero, zero, 001, but I had zero, 011, one, one, which is one-half. We're going to set that and make sure that the, there's no power going to the driver. Uh, make sure the, the power supply is turned off. So we'll go ahead and turn the power supply back on and we'll retest. Okay, so here we are, testing the x-axis again. Now the y-axis. So both motors are working. Let's go ahead and connect the Z-axis. Make sure you disconnect the USB controller and the power supply before we continue. 
We'll now do the Z axis, which is located here. Start with the C, the CP. You might want to cut these a little shorter, you can see it's hanging out. Let's connect this to the driver, to the CP plus. CW on the on the controller to the CW plus on the driver and use a jumpered wire for the ground connecting it from CP minus to CW minus and to ground on the USB controller. Okay, now we can connect the power supply to the driver to give the driver power. To VCC on the driver. And from common to ground. Now we'll take our motor and connect the motor to the driver. Yellow black to A minus. White brown to B plus. And blue orange to B minus. Now we can set our dip switches. Go. This time I'll do 1 16th. So you can see what the difference is between 1 8th and 1 16th. It's 1, 1, and 0. So we're up, up, and then down. And our current is going to stay the same. It's going to be 1, 1, and 0. 1, 1, and 0. So we have the 1 16th and then the current. Okay, now we can plug in the USB controller and see if it works. Okay, so we're going to plug in the USB controller. We've already plugged in the power supply. Now we're going to test the z-axis at 1 16th. You can see how slow it's moving around because it requires more steps to, to make the motor turn. It's doing 16 pulses per step. Let's try the y-axis again. That's over here. And the z-axis. Okay, we've completely connected the electronics for the USB interface for making your three-axis machine move. So in summary, we've connected all three drivers and all three motors to the USB interface, USB controller, that is controlled by Planet CNC. We connected the drivers one by one, making sure that each one works completely before we connected the next driver. We started with the x-axis and then the y-axis and the z-axis, ensuring that each driver and motor set works before we go to the next driver. That will help you in troubleshooting if one driver or one motor isn't working for some reason. You can troubleshoot that much easier than if you had all of them connected at one time, trying to get them all to work after you've connected all the wires and everything. So if you start with the fewest variables, the simplest method, just working with one driver at a time, making sure that those work. You have minimal wires that you have to understand and, and deal with when you're doing the troubleshooting. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.